So cool, it's like so therapeutic, like scraping skin off. <laughs> I'm your host, Tristan. Now let's go clock in. Today we're at Tide Handicraft and we'll be clocking in with some creative makers who work with leather. Now let's go clock in. Hi, my name is Zixian. I'm the senior leather craftsman and also the brand strategist for Tide. I've been working in this industry for more than four years. So uh, when working with leather, right, how can you actually determine the quality of leather? There are three main things to determine a good quality leather, which is the smell of it, touch of it, and as well as the origin of the leather. So there are a few countries that is very famous in terms of having high quality leather tannery, uh, which is Italy, France, or even in Belgium. We can tell when we smell at it, there's whether a heavy chemical smell or whether it's a natural tanning oil smell. Do you work with pig skin or also cow skin and how do you go about it? Uh, do we have to be more careful with what you're working with? I mean, this is a common knowledge that leather goods must be either cow or good or maybe exotic leather, which is those uh, alligators or straight uh, lizard. So if the customer, they know that they are quite sensitive with leather like cow leather or maybe pig leather, they will definitely not come to us. So when they come to us, they already know that they are okay with it. But of course, uh, we will always avoid to use pig skin. Shall we get to it and see how your process is like? Yeah, sure. I will be showing you how to craft a wash rat. Basically, there are two types of category leather in the market, which is wet shan and chrome tan. So wet shan are those type of leather that most of the American market, they will be doing it because uh, it's those type of leather that you scratch, you age. But whereby chrome tan are those European style. So basically, those leather is more vibrant and also uh, it will not get dirty and the wear and tear is actually lesser compared to wet shan leather. So we will put a pattern on top of the leather. So I will just cut it off. Making a wash wrap usually will take about 1mm thick. So now I'm going to thinner it, which is a sky fit. So basically this is a machine called skiving machine. What they will do is that there is a pinning knife over here. Then when we go through here, the leather will be thinner. So you will see. Oh, this, so it's like you're, you're flattening it. Yeah, okay. so you can see here is actually thinner, here is still thicker because yeah. I haven't fully completed the whole piece. So I will need to repeat few more times. Even like, let's say you're making shoes, do you also go through this? Yeah, I think every leather goods is a must to go through this. No matter bags or shoes, as long as related with leather, it's a must to have this machine. So basically after we thinner the leather, we will need to put the pattern on top of it just to make sure that all the thickness is fine. So a watch strap, usually how long does it take you to complete? Usually will take about two to three days. Still depends on what kind of watch so right now, I'm choosing the reinforcement material. What is the reinforcement made of? Leather as well. Leather. But they will sometimes mix with different material because the reinforcement serves different purpose. That's why there are so many types. Reinforcing the leather goods is actually about 70% of the whole process. Most importantly, a good piece of leather craft is about the reinforcing, the thickness, the size. So cool, it's like so therapeutic, like scraping skin off. <laughs> Then we will need to make it even smoother. Mm -hmm. I will need to use that machine. So usually when you work with tools like that, because I see a lot of like knives and sharp things, have you ever injured yourself before? This happens every day. The most common one is put by nails. That's the most common one. Even though we have been stitching thousand stitches every day, we will still put ourselves. There are a few times we really injured as serious as we really need to go to hospital to do stitches. I mean, we stitch the ladder, but the doctor stitches. Okay. <laughs> So, Zixian, tell me what a career progression is like in a field like this. Basically, you will start from being an assistant for sure. After the being an assistant, you are able to be a junior craftsman of course, but at least uh, you need a year time. So you learn some basic crafting, stitching, leather cutting. The most important thing is you are able to craft the product by looking at the reference. Yeah, I think there are three stages. Assistant, junior craftsman, then at least three years to become a senior craftsman. So what is the salary range like for a leather craftsman here in Malaysia? For us, we have uh, established a system in leather crafting bespoke service for leather goods so it will be around 1 to 5k depends what position are you in for an intern maybe a part-timer will be around 1k as a full time craftsman after a year could be around 2.5 to 3k okay. Okay. 
So right now we have got the reinforcement ready. We have got the bottom parts, which is the lining ready. After we have done all the layers, uh, what I will do now is assemble them, join all the layers together. So now I will be demo how I actually make the loop. This is actually a device that for me to do creasing light. There's th this kind of line you can okay. see here. It's actually just for decoration purpose. So, so is it something like melding? Uh, it's like heating up the ladder to draw a line right beside the stitching line. You can see all the products here. This is clearer. You can see here there's a line here. Is there actually heat coming from this machine? The reason why you see the colour is changing in this, there looks like a layer of wax on it, is because the leather itself has the oil in it. So when you heat it up, the oil actually comes up, so it looks like I have applied something on it, but it's actually not. This is a sign of good quality leather. Now what I'm actually doing is to punch the hole because I cannot put the loop over there and punch the hole, it's going to damage the strap. So right now what I'm doing is putting it on a piece of leather block, punch the hole to do the stitching. So just to double check. Right, so Zixian, uh, what process are we going through right now? What I will be doing right now is a saddle stitch, which we apply to all of our leather goods. So basically, saddle stitch is a must to have two needles and one thread joined together. Every stitch that we tighten it, we need to make sure that the strength is consistent. We need to have a certain direction in order to make sure all the stitch is nicely placed, nicely tightened. Crease, cross, crease, cross. Yo, so we have been here for three to four hours to make this leather watch strap. And can you imagine how long it takes to actually finish a leather handbag? And this has been half pre-made, so it takes a long time, guys. This craftsmanship is something that requires a lot of precision. So is there any other additional processes that we didn't get to catch today when it comes to creating leather goods? Yeah, there are still lots of methods and skill set that we are unable to demonstrate today. For example, you can see like all the tools behind. Every of the tools actually serve a specific purpose. Alright, so how does one actually start a career in leather craftsmanship in Malaysia? Do they have to go study in a university, take some courses or do they go through an apprenticeship? As far as I know, there are colleges and universities around the world providing leather craft courses. But in Malaysia, so far we haven't heard any and we are currently also trying to create a leather school to provide courses like this. So if you would like to start a business like this, you would like to learn about this skill, you can actually come to us. Before we go, is there anything that you want to tell our audience about where we can find you or what kind of services and, uh, that you provide? You guys can check out our social media, Facebook, Instagram, Type Goods or check out our website www.thaigoods.com We conduct workshops, we sell some of our signature collection, we also provide custom made service which is bespoke and also corporate service. So before you leave, make sure you check us out at We Are Clocking In on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram. And for our last episode, click here. This is Tristan and I'm clocking out. Somebody help me with this please. <laughs>